what's been happening for, for the last couple of years um, is that the Saudis have been diverting fuel ships away from the biggest port in Yemen, right? So you'll have somebody trying to bring fuel into the country, into Yemen, and they go to Hudaydah because it's the biggest port and it's close to the capital. It makes complete sense that you go there. And the, the Saudi-led coalition, they would take this, uh, um, these fuel ships and divert them away and keep them for a year sometimes, a year. And if you are the, you know, you're using this ship which usually doesn't belong to, to the people on board, right? They, they're borrowing it, loaning it. If you fail to deliver the cargo and give the ship back so it can be used by someone else or for another purpose, you have to pay a fine. It's called a demerage cost. Okay, that's, that's just what they call it in, in shipping language, right? In maritime trade. It's called a demerage fine, a demerage cost. My point here is that these fuel ships, they are kept so long. There's so many months, so many, even, like I said, in some cases, over a year, just being held without reason, the demerage costs become astronomical. So by the time the ship is finally released and allowed to actually go uh, to Yemen, the fines make up the bulk of the costs that people are paying at the pump. Do you understand? It doesn't have to be this expensive. They are making it expensive. And the other thing is that even after releasing it, you think they let it go to Hodeida? No! They make the ships go to another port that is controlled by the Saudi coalition, which is further away. So what does that increase? Transportation, because you, now, you, now you've got to drive the fuel all the way to Sana'a. And guess what? Who's on the road? Al-Qaeda. You have highway robbers who set up random checkpoints and make you pay a fine. Oh, this is our turf. Pay us or we'll shoot you. So now you have demerage costs, transportation costs, and highway robbery that all have to be added to the fuel cost at the pump. So people in Yemen are being screwed. And it's not just about filling up the tanks. Everything needs fuel. You want to have electricity? You need fuel. Right? A lot of people have generators. They need fuel to, to, to power their homes because the public infrastructure, guess what? It ain't there because of the Hadi government and the Saudi strikes and the, and, and the, the siege. You... you Everything, man, from hospitals uh, to clinics to uh, pharmace you know, pharmacies uh, to manufacturing, every sector needs fuel. And when you don't have that, guess what happens? The prices go up, you have inflation, and it creates uh, an even worse situation. So they are screwing this country left and right. And they, they even during this truce, they lied. They said, we're going to allow ships to go to Hodeida, which they should have been doing anyway, because the United Nations gives them certificates to dock and the, the Saudi coalition violates and, and disregards these certificates from the UN and takes the ships anyway. Um, but the Saudis said, OK, so from April until now, until October 2nd, we won't block the ships from going to Hodeida. And they did. They violated the truce. They refused to, to let ships dock in Hodeida, some of them. They refused to fully reopen Sana'a. And this is not even, I'm not having even talked about the attacks, the actual violent attacks which violate the ceasefire. So there are so many issues here. The fact the Saudis came out and said, you know what? We will let you dock your ships in Hodeida proves that they were holding these ships hostage on purpose, that this was real, the siege was real, and they were doing it intentionally.